The trial of a former Brooklyn Center police officer starts this week with jury selection. Brooklyn Center city leaders are preparing for possible civil unrest during the Kim Potter trial. Potter is charged with both first and second degree manslaughter in last April's fatal shooting of Dante Wright. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us what city leaders are doing to make sure local businesses and the police department are safe. Brooklyn Center Police tell me that they've increased security around the police building and throughout the city in commercial areas. They've also done a lot of pre-planning with various state and local agencies. Last spring, there were many demonstrations outside the Brooklyn Center Police Station after Dante Wright was fatally shot. And at first it was entertaining, but then after like a week and a half, it kind of got kind of annoying. Residents who live across from the police station are hoping everything stays calm. People are going to come out here and protest. It's, it's part of our constitutional rights. I just hope there's no violence. Nobody tries to burn anything down. Some people say they want former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter to be held accountable for her actions. Whether you were a cop or not, you're still a citizen of this society and anyone else who's not a cop sits time for murder, so I think you should sit time for murder. Meanwhile, Brooklyn Center leaders are trying to decide whether to impose a citywide curfew. The city council is considering establishing a set of criteria that would give the city manager the power to call for a curfew the day of the verdict in the days following. Jury selection gets underway on Tuesday and opening statements are scheduled for December 8th. In Brooklyn Center, Sonia Goins, CCX News. A school bus driver from Maple Grove has admitted to running over and killing a woman in Brooklyn Park and then fleeing the scene. The fatal accident occurred in March of last year with children aboard the bus. Jason Reinders pleaded guilty to hit and run criminal vehicular homicide. According to the criminal complaint, Reinders stopped the bus and admitted to hearing a noise but said he didn't think he hit anyone. He later dropped the children off at a charter school in Minneapolis. 45-year-old Devin Doherty of Brooklyn Park died in the crash. Reinders will be sentenced in January. Authorities have identified the victim of a fatal shooting in Brooklyn Center. According to the county medical examiner, 23-year-old Gabriel Johnson of Duluth died from a gunshot wound to the head. The incident happened a little over two weeks ago. Johnson died a few days later. Julia Smith of Brooklyn Center is charged in the shooting. According to the criminal complaint, Smith shot Johnson in a pickup truck. Two others in the truck described the shooting as an accident. The complaint says Smith initially told police that they were being robbed when his gun went off. Surveillance video, however, supported the witness accounts. As we enter the season of giving, a local organization asks that you consider picking up a holiday gift for a senior. The West Metro Fire Station in New Hope is one of the places taking part in Home Instead's Be a Santa to a Senior program. It runs through December 10th. You can find ideas on what to buy at the fire station as well as at select Lunds and Byerly stores. Home Instead will then distribute the gifts. The seniors who are isolated truly appreciate what they get. It's unbelievable to see the joy in their face, even if it's for a few minutes. For a full list of Santa to a Senior locations, you can visit our website at ccxmedia.org. This week's standout student takes us to Osseo Senior High School, and that's where we meet Aisha Main. She's president of the National Honor Society and excels at orchestra, but as Nina Bupasavan reports, is her caring spirit that sets her apart. When you first meet senior Aisha Main, her spirit shines bright. I love to gush about Aisha. Michelle Mazanek works in the Career Resource Center at Osseo Senior High, <laughs> where she first met the standout student as a sophomore, a meeting that still stays with her today. She's brilliant, she is wonderfully kind, um, and she's, she's going places. Like, she's going she's gonna to be a big deal. And I can't say that about every student that I work with. School leaders praise Maine as a super student with focus, maturity, and strength. Qualities Maine says is thanks to her two inspirations. Education has always been um, important to both of my parents. Um, both my parents came here from Africa to um, pursue further education. Um, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to go to such an amazing school as Osseo. And so I always try to live life to the fullest. A mindset that motivates her to help others too. 
This past year, she incorporated mental health programming at her National Honor Society meetings. A lot of the students um, are overachievers and they always push themselves to do um, things and they don't take into account their personal health or um, just their well-being in general. But it's not just her classmates that inspire her to make a positive difference. A couple of my family members have passed away from cancer, so just seeing what they went through with their battles, I knew I wanted to make a difference um, in the communities. Aisha now has her heart set on studying molecular or human biology in college and someday becoming a cancer researcher. Dreams, she says, wouldn't be possible without the support of her school. I don't think I've ever had a bad teacher here at Osseo. Every single one has just inspired me to go forth and achieve my dreams. Nina Bupasavan, CCX News. A Plymouth fisherman has a story of a lifetime, and it's one that survived freezing fingers and chilly November temperatures. Take a look at this photo provided by Nolan Springler seen on the left. It took both he and his fishing buddy to get a hold of this muskie that Nolan caught last week on Lake Mille Lacs. The muskie tipped the scales at 55 pounds, 14 ounces, breaking a state record set back in 1957. It is 57 and three quarter inches long. The fish was so big they couldn't find a certified scale and ended up weighing it at a UPS store in Golden Valley. The Maple Grove football team made the prep bowl for the first time in school history this year. There the Crimson met an unbeaten Lakeville South team for the Class 6A championship. Just one loss between the Crimson and Cougars coming into their state championship game tilt. Maple Grove's Jacob Anderson with a pass breakup in the end zone on a fourth down play in the second quarter. Maple Grove trying to get points on the board at the end of the half, but Connor Fournier's field goal try is blocked by Ryder Patterson, and the game is scoreless at halftime. Third quarter, Maple Grove gets on the board first. Crimson quarterback Jacob Kilzer rolls left and then floats a perfect pass into the hands of Tanner Allback in the end zone. It's a 35-yard touchdown as the Crimson take a 7-0 lead. But Lakeville South on their run-heavy offense comes right back. Quarterback Camden Dean on the designed run gets a nice downfield block, and that springs him. He scores on a 28-yard touchdown run. It's a 7-7 game. It stays that way until late in the fourth quarter. With just over three minutes left, Dean breaks free up the middle and sprints 52 yards for a touchdown to put Lakeville South up 13-7. They would miss the extra point. Last chance for Maple Grove from the south 35-yard line on a fourth and ten. Kilzer scrambles, but his run comes up about a half yard short of the first down. Lakeville South hands Maple Grove a heartbreaking loss, 13-7, and it's the Cougars winning their first state title in football. After knocking off third-ranked Moorhead Friday in the CCX Media Turkey Trot Boys Hockey Tournament, the host Wyzetta Boys met rival Edina in the championship game. Here's Jay Wilcox with the highlights. Host Wyzetta looking to win the CCX Turkey Trot Boys Hockey Tournament Finals. They face arch-rival Edina. Edina strikes early on the Trojans' turnover as Trey Fetchko tucks it in for a 1-0 lead just 126 into the game. Late in the first, Reese Wallen fires and Britton Alstead is there for the rebound goal. Another look at the power play marker that ties the game one to one after one period. Early in the second, Jimmy Clark is there to tap the puck in after a Wyzetta turnover. The Hornets retake the lead at two to one. Wyzetta's Max McCollins fires from the left wing boards and sneaks the shot home as the Trojans tie the game up. It's two to two through two periods. But Edina owns the third. They score four times, including three in a row by Matt Vandervoort, as Edina wins it 6-2 to two to take the turkey trot title. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Maple Grove looked to bounce back after losing a three-goal lead against Edina in the semifinals. The Crimson met Moorhead in the third-place game of turkey trot. The Crimson and Spuds, each looking for their first win of the season in this third place game. Early first period, and Maple Grove's Daniel Nelson picks off a pass in the Moorhead zone, and then he is headed back the other way on a breakaway. The sophomore scores his first varsity goal, shorthanded, and the Crimson are up 1 0. 
Later in the first, Jack Kernan wins a face-off draw back to Beck Picanato at the point. His shot on net is stopped, but number 34, Ben Glad, knocks the rebound home. It's 2-0 Maple Grove after one. Coach John Ammerman's Warhead team gets on the board early in the second period. Thomas Schrader stays with it and scores on his rebound try. It's a 2-1 game. The Crimson answer about 90 seconds later. Lucas Margano with a pass out front to Chayton Fisher. He scores on his rebound try. The Crimson are back up by two goals. Later in the second, Landon Gunderson passes out front. Kernan's shot is stopped, but Nelson is there to bang in his second goal of the game to make it 4-1. Maple Grove goalie Toby Kopp turns away 35 shots in the night, including this one in the third period, as the Crimson go on to win 5-2. They open Northwest Suburban Conference play Thursday against Champlin Park. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.